Welcome to this episode of Monday Morning Joe. I'm Dr. Mark Gomez. Monday Morning Joe is a quick hitting, coffee talk style, four episode series on what you need to know about multi-cancer early detection or MSED tests. The goal of this segment is to provide you with a better understanding of how MSED screening can be incorporated into clinical practice. In the last episode, we talked about the clinical trial data on investigational and currently available MSED tests. Before we begin, please remember to subscribe to the Exchange CME YouTube channel and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss any new episodes in this series. All right, let's begin. What makes someone eligible for MSED screening? Well, there are no set guidelines, but some suggested criteria by the manufacturer and the MSED consortium include being at least 50 years of age, having a family or personal history of cancer, or having germline or genetic mutations. There are other risk factors that increase cancer risk, so they're worth mentioning. These include alcohol use, exposure to cancer-causing substances, immunosuppression, infectious agents, obesity, and tobacco use. Who is not a candidate for MSED screening? The pediatric populations under 21, pregnant women, and anybody who has an active cancer diagnosis or who has been treated for cancer in the last three years. Remember, MSED testing is used as an adjunct to current single cancer guideline-based screening modalities, not as a substitution. However, it is important they discuss the potential pros and cons of MSED testing with each patient. Some of the potential advantages include finding more cancers earlier, including in asymptomatic patients. The trials demonstrate improved efficiency of testing with increased positive predictive value and reducing the number needed to screen. Lastly, we can screen organ sites currently without a screening modality. Some of the potential disadvantages that your patient should be aware of include the following. These tests are currently not covered by insurance. A no cancer detected does not rule out future cancer risk. And lastly, consequential cancers may be found sooner, but the patient may not live any longer. So what is the general workflow for MSED testing? This is based on how the process works when using the gallery test, which is the only commercially available test. After consulting with your patient and determining if they're eligible or not, you can simply draw blood in the office, send it to the manufacturer, and in about two weeks, you'll get the results. The results are binary. They come back as either no cancer signal detected, and then you continue to use your single cancer screening paradigms, or it'll say cancer signal detected, but most importantly, with a cancer signal or origin or CSO that can help aid in the diagnostic next steps. What do you do if an MSED test delivers a signal detected result? These are suggested initial diagnostic steps for some common cancers. If the CSO prediction is head and neck, the proposed first slide responses are blood work, complete physical examination, fiber optic examination by an ENT, followed by ultrasound, CT, or MRI, or potentially even a PET CT scan. And if the patient comes back with a CSO for breast, in addition to blood work, the proposed next step is to do a diagnostic mammogram with ultrasound or an MRI of the breast if the patient had already received a mammogram in the last three months. You may be wondering, when do you repeat MSED testing? And does the timing of the repeat test differ if there was a negative result or a false positive? Well, if an individual has a false positive result, that patient may be eligible for a complementary repeat tests in three to six months. And if an individual comes back as no cancer signal detected, the general rule of thumb is to repeat the test annually. So here are some key take home points. MSED screening can be incorporated into the primary care setting, especially for patients 50 years or older or those with additional risk factors. Patient counseling about risks, false positives and false negatives must occur and they are significant to discuss. Clinicians should be aware of the appropriate first-line diagnostic next steps should a patient receive 
a positive cancer signal result, or CSO. Thank you for joining me today. As discussed earlier, please check back for new episodes on the Exchange CME YouTube channel. Clinicians, nurses, and pharmacists can also visit exchangecme.com for free access to CME in a variety of therapeutic areas. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the next episode of Monday Morning Joe, where I'll discuss health disparities in cancer and cancer screening and how AMSID tests have the potential to help reduce them.